So it is Halloween season, as you can see, I am in costume, although many people would say that this outfit more accurately reflects my true identity, which is indeed a Greek god. So anyway, today we're going to take a look at one of the most compelling longevity studies. This is a 2019 study that Brian Johnson drew inspiration from when he began constructing his longevity protocol, and I can see why he was captivated by this study. Participants reversed their epigenetic or biological age by 2.5 years in just one year, which was fairly unprecedented. Biological age is essentially how old your cells and tissues are in contrast to your chronological age, which is the number of years since your birth. Obviously, biological age is a great indicator of overall health, which is why biohackers seek to keep it as low as possible or even reverse it which we now know is apparently possible. I actually got two biological age tests done a few years ago, and I was indeed able to reverse my biological age by two years in just six months. So the goal of this 2019 study was to rejuvenate the thymus, which is a gland in the chest responsible for immune function, and it tends to get smaller as we age. So we'll take a look at the supplements this study utilized, and then what I consider a practical, more accessible array of supplements that I currently implement that hopefully replicates these beneficial effects that we saw in the study. So in the study, they gave participants DHEA, metformin, and growth hormone. The theory here was that the growth hormone would help regenerate old damaged tissue and improve mitochondrial function, while the DHEA and metformin would more than counteract any negative potential side effects of the growth hormone Primarily, insulin resistance is the side effect of concern. So DHEA and metformin both indeed have been demonstrated to enhance insulin sensitivity, so it makes sense why they're so prominent in the health and longevity community, since insulin resistance is implicated in essentially every pathology and aging mechanism. But both DHEA and metformin also seem to provide longevity benefits distinct from specifically enhancing insulin sensitivity. So in this study, for example, DHEA sulfate levels were positively associated with longevity independent of blood pressure and fasting plasma glucose, which is a decent proxy for insulin resistance. It has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects, and it's also a precursor to testosterone, so it supports optimal hormonal function. Metformin also seems to reduce inflammation and oxidative stress. Metformin reduces mitochondrial dysfunction by slightly inhibiting complex one of the mitochondrial respiratory chain. This essentially helps mitochondria be more resilient to stress, enabling them to adapt via a hormetic effect. Now, in the scientific community, there are concerns that growth factors like growth hormone and IGF-1 could expedite cancer proliferation simply because they make shit grow. But in the study, they monitored indicators of such a phenomenon, one approach being the examination of PSA levels, which is a good benchmark for prostate cancer, and PSA levels actually improved significantly. So based on this study, it seems that the DHEA and metformin, in combination with the growth hormone, did prevent the growth hormone from exerting negative effects. This is why it's reductive to label a supplement as either good or bad. Depending on the dosage and the ancillary compounds implemented with the compound in question, the compound could provide beneficial or detrimental effects. But personally, I'm fairly confident that mild increases in growth hormone in combination with insulin sensitivity enhancing supplements does indeed result in a net positive outcome in overall health the vast majority of the time. Now in the US, you can actually buy DHE over the counter, but metformin and growth hormone require a prescription and growth hormone injections are exorbitantly expensive. So in order to replicate the beneficial effects of these compounds, here's what I use. So as a replacement for metformin, I utilize slin pills, which you guys probably know is a combination of herbs and other relatively natural compounds designed to enhance insulin sensitivity. I actually used to take both metformin and slin pills, but after taking metformin for about a month, it gave me terrible acid reflux. Metformin through a variety of mechanisms like increasing vagal tone and enhancing the secretion of glucagon like peptide one it delays gastric emptying so you can imagine how this would improve insulin sensitivity by slowing the release of glucose into the bloodstream but it can also make your food sit in your stomach for way too long which can allow it to ferment and produce a lot of gas that can contribute to acid reflux and personally i'm content with the potency of slim pills so I performed an experiment where I took slim pills alongside MK677. MK677 has the potential to reduce insulin sensitivity because it does enhance growth hormone, but my insulin sensitivity actually improved 
based on my HbA1c or average blood sugar levels, which is a good proxy for insulin resistance. Now, I'm sure that you could probably guess that MK677 is indeed the substitute that I use for the growth hormone injections. So MK677 is a growth hormone secretagogue, and based on the studies, on average, it increases growth hormone by around 70%. Now, Brian Johnson actually tried various growth hormone enhancing supplements, including growth hormone injections and also growth hormone releasing peptides like CJC1295 and ipamorelin. He didn't seem to respond well to any of them. The growth hormone seemed to reduce his insulin sensitivity by too much. I'd say the worst outcome was using human growth hormone. We were repeating a study that was done for thymus rejuvenation. 1.8 IU was the dose. I had my blood glucose were messed up. I don't think we would do HGH again. Although I don't know if this was before or after he started taking relatively large dosages of metformin. And then he tried the growth hormone releasing peptides, but they actually disrupted his sleep. So first I did the CJC and the, um, I need to pull up my- My Pamarillin. Yep, Pamarillin, yeah. I did that. And I had such a negative side effect where I took it right before I went to bed, it wrecked my sleep. Really? I just- So many people say they sleep so good with it. Oh, it destroyed yeah. me. Yeah. Which is an exemplification of the significance of individual variability. For most people, the enhanced growth hormone improves sleep quality. But from my experience of speaking with Natty Plus pioneers, growth hormone releasing agents, like MK677, for example, do negatively impact sleep quality for some people. Now, of course, if I were in this position, I would simply take them in the morning, but apparently Brian Johnson tried this and it still disrupted his sleep, which for him is the most vital aspect of his protocol. So I understand why he quit. Now, I'm curious why I never heard of him speak about trying MK677. My theory would be that because he tries to remain in a caloric deficit for the longevity benefits, and he stated that he's already hungry throughout the day all the time, he probably avoids MK677 because it does stimulate the ghrelin receptor, thereby increasing hunger, which may result in hunger levels that are just too uncomfortable for him. But for me personally, 10 milligrams daily of MK677 does not increase my hunger to uncomfortable levels, even if I take it in the morning. So it does seem to be a totally viable approach for me. And then for the DHEA, you know, I could just buy the isolated DHEA, but because I already take black ox testosterone booster, which does indeed contain DHEA, the DHEA part of the equation is already satisfied. So that's my protocol, black ox for the DHEA, slim pills to enhance insulin sensitivity, although DHEA does somewhat do that as well, and then MK677 for the growth hormone enhancement. Now, what I'm curious about is how much each of these supplements contributed to the aging reversal in the study. I'm curious if they had just left out the metformin, for example, would the biological age have been reversed by two years or just one year or not at all? You know, I think it's safe to assume that all three supplements played a significant role because the results were so dramatic. It's certainly tough to imagine that just one or even two of these compounds in combination caused a 2.5 year reduction in biological age, for example. And because the results were so significant, I believe that there must have been some type of synergistic effect at play where the results from all three of the supplements combined is greater than the sum of each of these supplements in isolation. But I would like to hear your thoughts. Let me know if you find the study convincing and if you've had experiences with any of these compounds. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.